If a love story spans two seasons, I'm bored. Season two of The Tale of the Nine-Tailed, also known as The Tale of the Nine-Tailed 1938, follows our beloved Yoon as he travels back in time to catch the mysterious white red mask thief who stole a precious and powerful stone. Back in 1938, he runs into his childhood friend and former mountain deity of the West, Honjo, his little brother, Li Rang, and his frenemy, Mo Young. Unlike in season one, which was a through and through romance with a little dash of friendship and a little dash of brotherhood, this sequel slash actually a prequel is flipped. It's about friendship and brotherhood with a little dash of romance. Also, season one was more of a drama with action in it, whereas this is more of an action with drama in it, if you know what I mean. Personally, there's nothing that pulls at my heartstrings more than a friendship storyline. There's just something about friendship that I feel is so relatable, you know? I, I love love, love is a great thing, but I feel like not everyone gets to experience love, and granted, not everyone gets to experience friendship, but I do think it's more accessible. I do think more people get to experience friendship than they get to experience love. And therefore, it's something that everyone can relate to, if you know what I mean. Also, I think it was really, really smart of the writers to pivot the story to one about friendship and brotherhood because I don't know about you, but if a love story spans two seasons... I'm bored. It only takes one season to tell a love story from beginning to end. And if we're doing something else, it needs to be not about love. You know what I mean? So I really like this pivot and I can confidently say that this show is definitely a must watch. Our protagonist, Iyun, is as captivating as ever. His little brother is as vulnerable and as adorable as ever. The friendship was everything. It was beautiful. It was nice to watch. Definitely a winner. It is available on Prime, so you can watch it if you haven't already. And I think the best part about this particular show is that even if you didn't watch season one, you can still fully appreciate season two in all of its glory. I think that the writers did a great job of filling you in on all the important details of season one. So you don't feel like you're missing out if you don't watch season one because season one is on Netflix and season two is on Prime, so it's a little confusing. If you're looking for more Korean drama recommendations, I post recommendation videos every Friday, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a video. All right, let's talk about what I liked and didn't like about the show. We're gonna talk about the nitty gritty, so beware that there are spoilers that may ruin your viewing experience if you haven't seen this show already. I really appreciated that the red white mask villain, quote unquote, is not really a villain. I think that the best villains are ones whose humanity is revealed, right? It feels good to know that all of us have good and evil inside of us and nobody's perfect. Even Yoon had his flaws. Like he kept saying, oh, I didn't abandon you. I didn't abandon you, blah, blah, blah. Like maybe he didn't forget about anybody, but all those years that his little brother had to fend for himself, he was basically abandoned. Like let's just be real, right? I love the way that this show balances serious storyline with moments of levity. This is definitely my type of drama. It has a sense of urgency. The stakes do feel real, but the lighthearted nature of the characters keeps it nice and airy because I like to completely engross myself in these types of shows. And if it's too heavy, then it just gives me anxiety and it's like not a fun viewing experience, not a pleasant viewing experience for me. So I felt like this one was just right, just like Goldilocks. The visual effect of the final fight scene with the chief commissioner and Yoon, it was really powerful. I felt like the red and the black was a symbol of good versus evil, you know, because red is a good fortune color in East Asia. So I fully appreciated that detail. Let's talk about the misses. They dedicated an entire episode to Ron finding out about his death, but the anticipated scene where Ron confronts Yoon and then Yoon shows Ron the video and he learns all about his sacrifice was so anticlimactic. He was just like, oh, oh, did you cry? Ha ha ha. And it's like, come on, buddy, you have found love. You're dying in 2020. Like, how tragic is that? And then on top of that, there's like his whole family that he left behind. He doesn't even know about that. It's so tragic. Iran's love story is 
everything. I just wish that they would have added a little bit more detail to it, to be honest. I think that it could have been nice to add a couple more scenes of them falling in love. I feel like if they don't have enough scenes where people are falling in love, I'm just like, how did you guys fall in love? You've literally met twice. And I know that we're supposed to assume that they've met more off camera, but honestly, I feel like they gave the vet and the necklace thief way more airtime in season one. So why didn't they do the same for Ron? I feel like Rang is always getting the short end of the stick and I'm just not here for it. Like I wanted to see him and the mermaid more in this show and it was a miss for me, honestly. I'm not understanding the time travel philosophy of this show. The grandma said that anything that happens while Yoon is in the past won't change the future. Okay, so does Rang actually stick with the mermaid or not? Does 1938 Yoon finally become the big brother he's supposed to be? What's happening with that? The three friends who re Unite at the end. What's happening there? Do they continue to be friends? Like, what's happening? Yoon's existence in 1938 didn't change historical facts. I totally get that. But it definitely changed the path of his friends, of Ron, of even his own path, because then he started, you know, hanging out with his brother and all that stuff. So I would love to know, is this a parallel universe? Did Was there a split in the timeline that created a different future? There's so many questions and not enough answers. And here's the thing. I like sci-fi. So I've watched so many shows about time travel and they need to make sense. This one's not making sense for me. It could very well be that because it wasn't Korean, I didn't like actually catch everything. You know, I didn't catch the explanation, but I remember that all the granny said was do whatever you want because it's not going to affect the future. I don't remember her explaining exactly why it wasn't going to affect the future. And I would love to know how these people from 1938 how they fare out in the future. Like, I just don't understand. Another point is that they kept mentioning that Hongju is in this era, quote unquote. So were they suggesting that she's not in the future? Like, what is happening with her? Everybody else seems to have a future, except for Ron, who obviously died in 2020. But why are they not mentioning how her life turns out in the future. This is really stressing me out because I really loved her as a character, you know what I mean? I also felt that the last episode was a little rushed and I know I said that season one's ending was a little too long, but this one seemed a little too short, back to Goldilocks. See, I wish they would have given me more time to like soak things in. They would have taken their time a little bit. It was just kind of like boom, 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 here, this, that, da, da, da. And honestly, I think I'm being more critical on this show because I really did think it was a good show. Had it been a bad show, I probably would have had less to say because bad shows are just bad and there's nothing to it. You know what I mean? So my final thoughts, like I said, this is a must watch and you should definitely move it up to number one in your queue if you haven't watched it already. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I will see you in the next one.